Well, darling, aren't you overdoing? I'm going to ride him. I like to break him myself. Can't hardly tell which one of you worked the harder. Look at you. No question. Me. <laughs> That horse will be nuzzling sugar from your pocket in just one more day, son. There ain't a thing on this place that boy can do. Not one single thing. I know. Back in Orleans. You ever figure to have a son like this, huh? I never did. Still hard to believe. <laughs> Two years, she still can't tell what hit her. <laughs> I can tell you, Miss Marvin. He's a preacher. And him asking you, do you take this man to be your... You ever feel sorry? Oh, God, don't you be silly. Henry! <clears throat> Thought you might like to take a look at these survey plans of the railroad spur. Make sure they don't lay that track right through your living room. <laughs> <laughs> I sure would. Young lady, you look prettier every time I see you. Well, then I'll have to ride over more often. <laughs> This time I came by to get some money from you. Fifty cents for the church supper at our place Saturday night. Fifty cents? Mm-hmm. Well, that's half a day's pay. If I know you, you'll eat more than that. We're never going to get to study those plans standing around out here. Put your shirt on, son, and come on in. Seeing how half this thing's going to be yours. Right, Paul. Paul, did you like a cool drink? Mm, sounds wonderful. That's for me. Therese? Darling, I have to get my roses into water. Oh, well, be sure to come early Saturday night. You bet. We'll need some help with the tables. <laughs> <laughs> you like her, don't you? Who, Audra? Mm -hmm. Never thought about it. She has. I <laughs> don't mean a thing. We grew up together. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot the engineering notes. Here. Well, don't get involved with her. Not for your sake, darling. For hers. Going to the De Covens. Yes, why? Well, would you stop at the Marvin place for me? Henry likes to check his olives against ours. I meant to send them with you when you went over with Jared, but... What's the matter? Did you and Will have a fight? Oh, no, we... 
Well, it's just that I feel so awkward whenever I go over there. I keep remembering Mrs. Marvin. I mean, the real Mrs. Marvin. Oh, Audra. Therese is the real Mrs. Marvin. Well, I know, but... Well, he didn't have to marry again so soon. It, it was only a year. He was lonely. People do lots of things when they're lonely. Never mind. I'll send them over with Diego. Oh, that's all right. I'm going right by. I don't mind. Not really. Spurs ready? Tomorrow, maybe. If you ask me nice. Well, you said you'd have them two days ago. Well, now, looking at a pretty face like yours, man don't hardly know what he's saying. I'll expect you to have them tomorrow. Early. Time too. Oh. Seeker, no drinking on the job. Awful well, hot in here. I ain't heard nothing. Except me. My horse threw a shoe again. Well, can happen. No telling when a horse Second got... time in ten days, up by the river. I had to walk him all the way back in. Now suppose you walk on over to the office and pick up your time and get out of here. The sooner the better. Somebody? Nope. Just brought something over for your father. Arthur? Well, darling, what a nice surprise. Almost as uh, pleasant as it is unexpected. Hello, Mrs. Marvin. Hello. Uh, Mother sent those olives over for your husband. Oh, thank you. You mean you rode all the way over here just for these? Well, I could have picked them up tonight. Tonight? It's her supper. Well, I told you, over at the Barclays. Oh, darling, I'm so terribly sorry. Sorry? <laughs> sorry for what? Well, the Wadens are coming over for dinner tonight. Well, they're sure not coming to see me. Well, they come as much to see you as any of us. Really, darling, the way she passes over you... Worth getting away just for that. What time? Well, it, it, it really isn't polite. Half past seven, okay? That'll be fine. Uh, hey, who you got me sitting with? Me. You want your money back? Can I get it? Nope. Well, then I guess I'll just have to suck. <laughs> bother you too? Billy. Um, 
How's the supper? Good. Real good. Night. Well, uh, about this afternoon, I guess that's why I really waited up. I, I just had to make sure that you understood. Forget it. I can't. I uh, wouldn't want you to think that I... I don't. Oh, I knew there'd be other Saturday nights and other suppers and other girls. I just couldn't stand to see you hurt your daddy. Hurt Pa? Well, darling, you know how proud of you he is. How he loves to show you off to all of his friends. Just isn't right to disappoint him, to hurt him. It isn't right to, to hurt anyone who loves you like that. But uh, I never did mean to offend you. So, uh, kiss and make up. <laughs> well, there's no need to argue about it now. There's uh, plenty of time to talk things over. Will, um, your uh, daddy's got to sign some papers. He's, uh, He's going over to the Barclays Monday morning. Monday morning, I'll be in town. Any more left in there? Oh, that's it. Well, what do you say you and me go get a beer, huh? I'll be right with you. I got to stop at Sun Shop. Cold beer, please, Frank. Hey, don't you think you better take it a little easy? Nick, Nick Barkley. Hey, no, 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 no. Come on. Now, you listen to me. Your father happens to be a very dear friend of ours. And I don't think he'd like it too much if he knew I just stood around. Well, I can't stand nobody's pleasure, can you? Come on, Will, let's go. Come I on. think maybe the poor boy don't want to go home. Well, now, it don't matter much what you think. It matters to me. When I see a fella needing a drink. You're in the way, Seeger. That's so. Well, why don't you just move me out? <laughs> on your beer, Frank. I understand, Nick. All right, Will, let's go home. Well. Thank you. anyway. Bad. <laughs> Come on, Will. What happened? Well, Come on, let's go, Will. Let me climb you. 
with help. No, no, on his own. <laughs> well, he never had a drink in his life. He's a fast learner, I'd say. Not wine, no whiskey, nor anything. That's the way I raised him. And I don't think it funny for you fellas to wear him down and dump him uh, and try to laugh no, no, at no, all. Wait a minute. Are you trying to tell us that we brought him back here after we got him drunk? If you're looking for someone to tar, it seems to me you're looking in the wrong direction. You raise a colt, you teach him to carry a saddle. You raise a man, you teach him to carry a drink. Come on. I know it sounds horrible, whiskey to kill whiskey, but it really does help. It's called Hair of the Dog. Mm. You're very difficult. But then you always have been. You never did know what was good for you. You should have stayed home with me today. We could have talked. You wouldn't have gotten into any trouble. I'm all right now. Not yet. Now, you're not ready to face the world yet. You rest nice and easy. But your rest will tell you when all the whiskey's gone. I suppose it had to happen sometime. But you didn't have to go and get yourself sick over it. First drinks like anything else. First look at the ocean. First ride in a train. First love. First heartbreak. First stolen kiss. You do that to him? In his own house? You're dirt. I'm young. Oh, well, I've tried. You don't know how hard I've tried. But I'm just not cut out for an old man's darling. And don't you try to make me say I'm sorry, because I'm not. I'm not sorry, no shame, no fright, neither. Because I know that this is real. It's clean and it's good. You're trash. You're filth. Don't say that to me. Please don't say that to me. You do that to him? You're the scum of the earth. My own father. He's not your father. What'd you say? I said he's not your father. That's right. He took you out of an orphanage and they were glad to get rid of you. He agreed to keep you. You were 24 and he had himself a free work hand, a slave, and that's all he ever wanted anyway. You're lying. I found the key to the safe. It's in his will. That's why he never lets you have a drink. It's in his contract with the orphanage. Oh, Will. Oh, darling, it doesn't have to be like this. I love you, Will. I've known it for months. Oh, please, Will. Please love me too, Will. Get out. Please, Will. Get out! <laughs> down to supper. <laughs> it's his first time. He hasn't learned you gotta make yourself eat. Darling, I'll come with you. It's mighty sweet of you nursing them all afternoon. I don't know what I'd do without you. Daddy's here. He wants you down to supper, sugar. 
Boy, you'll feel better with some food in your stomach. You gotta try. Will? He's just a shame, darling. He can't face you yet. He's so very young. Now, don't you let it spoil your dinner. Please don't worry about him. He'll be back. Come on, darling. Come on. Oh, well, come on in. I think Audra's in the living room. Well, what do you know? You can even walk. Well, how nice to see you. How are you, Miss Barkley? What happened? Your paw kick you out just for one little drunk? Oh, Nick. We were just going into supper. Won't you join us? Didn't come for supper, ma'am. Oh, something else? A job. A job? What's the matter, Will? Doesn't your father have enough work for you? Always work to do, I guess. Comes a time when a man's got to break away. Start making out for himself. I thought, you know, being friends, I... I see. Well, Nick does the hiring. Just so happens I'm a short one man. You any good in the forge? Job needs doing, I can do it. Thirty dollars a month and keep. Tell Mac I said put you on, all right? Thanks. I wonder what happened. I wonder. You will. I'll make up. You know, I don't like to pry, but... Well, I've known your father a good many years. As a matter of fact, he was one of my first clients. I wouldn't like to see him hurt. Maybe you ought to think this over a little more. I thought it over. Well, you know, sometimes things seem a lot worse than they really are. If you've had some little difference of opinion... Well... Nothing like that. We'll get along fine. Well, then it seems to me he'd be hurt all the more. You know, Will, your father's had a lot of hurt in his life already. All those years your mother was sick. I really think the only thing that got him through it was you. I don't think you have any real notion of how much you mean to your father. You can stop playing games. He's not my father. Who told you that? Don't matter who or how, I found out is all. Pick me out of an orphanage, could have been me or any other. One, two, three, there's one looks healthy and strong. Signed papers and put a ring through my nose. If I tried to run, he could have hauled me right back. Well, I don't think you run away from someone who means as much to you as he does. Is there some other reason? No, none. I told you, there's no other reason. Just, they let me think I was his owner, so. Jared, believe me. Let it drop. Please. I wish I could. And I will. Jared, so early? 
I apologize for the hour, but I'd like to see Henry. It's rather important. Of course. Um, won't you come in? Thank you. No business this morning, Jared. I've been up half the night. Will's gone. He's disappeared. Not even a trace. I know, Henry. He's over at our place. He rode over last night and asked for a job. Why? For no reason? Not even a word? Well, he was pretty worked up. He, uh, he knows the truth about himself, about the orphanage. He couldn't. He couldn't miss and you let it out. I think you know better than that. You're the only other one that knows. It's written in my will. You have it in your safe right now. You have a copy, too? Under lock and key, like it's always been. He didn't get it from me. Who told him, Jared? I wish I knew. Henry, you mean Will isn't your son? Oh, darling, why didn't you ever tell him? We meant to. We always meant to. It, it's just that the right time never seemed to come. Maybe it's because we didn't want it to come. Maybe it's because we loved him too much. Thought that if we told him, he'd understand that we weren't just holding him. There must have been something else that made him run. I'm afraid you'll have to ask him. I'll ride over and bring him back. Henry, wouldn't it be better if Will came back on his own? Oh, just you wait and see. He'll come running back. First little spat he has with Audra. Now, if you don't mind, I want to make sure that Henry gets some rest. He's just been so upset, poor darling. I'll stop by tomorrow, Henry. Goodbye. I know what's really bothering Will. It's that girl. Audra? She wants Will, and she won't stop at anything. But you're a man, darling, and I wouldn't expect you to understand. Go on. only lemonade. Listen, this is my drink from now on. Thank you, Mother, will you? For what? She's in town with Heath. Well, then, thank you. <sighs> Almost got away from me. You told Nick you could handle a forge. A forge, not a fire. Takes a man to do both. Left some tools. Moon! They got my mark. trying to talk to me. Darling, I was hoping to talk to you. Alone? Of course. Was my mama. I wouldn't argue with her. Here, my family's away. Oh, my. This is a wonderful room. Every time I come here, you know, my daddy used to keep his guns just like this. Many's the time I watched him oil and polish. You wanted to talk to me? Yes. Send him home, Audra. You can't hope to hold him. 
I'm not trying to. I, I didn't even know he was coming. Well, of course you have to say that, darling. I understand completely. Oh, but there's nothing Sometimes that... you can't do what you want. Sometimes you gotta stop and think of others. Do you know what you're doing to his daddy? I'm not doing anything to Mr. Marvin or Will or anyone else. Now, if you'll excuse me, please. You princess with me, I know exactly what you're up to, sugar. Little Miss Soap and Starch Country Girl. Don't know A from B or which from what. Gonna be pure shock to death when I tell her. You're not the only one he's looked at. That's right, little country girl. Things like that happen. Everywhere I go, everywhere I turn, he's been after me, me, for months. I don't believe that. Your second choice, darling. Strictly hand me down. I think Will ought to hear this. Olga! Oh, <laughs> What's the matter? Why would she pick up a gun? I don't know. Well, there must be some reason. Audra! Well, she... She was saying such wild things that... I said I was going to get you, and she grabbed the gun and... What kind of wild things? She said you were always after her. It was the other way around. Would kill Paul when he finds out the truth about her. Well, you should have seen him when he brought her home. It was like she started a whole new life for him. He never had much of one before that. Not with Ma and her being sick all those years. I can say it was an accident and not tell him the rest. No, the sheriff will be asking questions. But Jerry will know what to do. Listen, I don't want you to have to lie. But it's not really a lie. It was an accident. Oh, Will, I thought you... Mother... She... I, I did it, ma'am. It was an accident. Well, I thought I heard somebody. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, did you give me a hard time. But it don't matter now that you're back. It don't matter one bit. <laughs> it just goes to show you what pure foolishness a man can do. <laughs> I should have told you about the orphanage and... I should have told them how to hold a drink and not worried about them taking them away. Pa, I got plans for you, Will. I got big plans, yes, sir. Starting today, Will. Pa, will I you want stop? You, I want... Will you... Will you listen? Was well, something wrong? Pa...
Grandpa, don't. Please, you'll hurt yourself more. What happened? It was an accident, Henry. Over at our place. Your place? She came to get me, Pa. To bring me home. We was in the gun room with Audra. Audra? Audra killed her? No, Pa. It, it, it was me. But it was an accident, Pa. She, she picked up the gun, admiring it like. And Audra told her to put it away because, well, it, it might go off. But, Pa, then I reached for the gun and... Pa, it's the truth. The truth is it was the girl's fault. That's pretty wild talk. She didn't tease him to come over there. Therese wouldn't have had to follow after him. And she wouldn't be lying dead in the wagon. Oh, no, Pa. Underneath that pretty face and that sweetness. You're wrong. Pa, if you just stop and listen. I gotta make arrangements. Ruth, what is it, Jared? I don't know yet. Steve just said he wants to see us. Sorry to have you ladies drive all the way in, but uh, I'm afraid it was necessary. Miss Berkeley? Mr. Seeger, how nice to see you sober. Sober on the day of the shooting, too. So I can recall the real plane. Now, Bert, you weren't there. Nick ran you off last week. I leave in time to pick up my tools. That's why I went back. All right. Now, you tell them what you told me. Sure. Like I just said. I'm getting my tools, and Mrs. Marvin rides up and says to the girl, I want to talk to you inside. So, the two of them go in the house together. Just the two of them? There was just two of them in there when the gun went off. That's not true. Will Marvin says he was in there also. Now, why would he lie? He stuck on a girl. Want to help her out, wouldn't he? Maybe save that pretty neck from a stretching. Mr. Seeger, I've lived here a good many years. I've seen men lie for a drink or a dollar. But to lie out of mean personal spite to try and destroy a young girl's life. I warn you, Mr. Seeger. When we get through with you, there will be no place in this entire valley that you can hide. No place. I'm just telling what happened is all. No, I've been figuring on moving down Fresno away. But if you need me for the hearing, I'll stay. Audra, he is lying, isn't he? Now, that don't mean I can keep his mouth shut. Now, he'll talk his head off at the inquest. Inquest? I didn't think you needed an inquest. I've got to call one now. Friday afternoon, 3 o'clock, here. <laughs> just be talking to us, you'll be talking to a coroner's jury. Most of them friends of Henry's probably just come from the funeral. They'll be feeling sorry for him. I know. That's why you have to be absolutely sure of what you're going to say. I'm sure. Is there anything you've forgotten? Anything at all? Nothing. It was an accident. You'll swear to it. Yes. Now, you say she picked up the gun and Will grabbed for it. Yes. So Seeger is lying. Yes. Audra, I'm only trying to help. Now, come on. There's nothing to be frightened about. You know, the word accident can mean a lot of different things. If Will grabbed for the gun because he was worried, that is how it happened. You keep asking me. I'm sorry. 
But if it did happen some other way... I told you! I mean, he could have grabbed for that gun for a lot of different reasons. If Therese were angry or upset... She wasn't! You're sure? Yes, he wasn't even in the... He wasn't even in the room. You were the only one there with her. Yes. It was you who grabbed for the gun. She picked it up. I was so frightened. Why? Why? She was so angry, so, so wild. Why? Why, Audra? I can't tell you. Audra, Jared can't defend you unless you tell him the whole truth. Oh, honey, I can't build a wall without any bricks. Oh, Jared, I don't want to hurt anybody. Who? Audrey, if I have to ask you all night and all day, I want to know who it is you're protecting. Now listen to me. I've got a pretty good idea already, but I need to hear you say it. Jared, I can't tell you. You'll have to ask Will. There he is. If I was you, I'd take it slow and easy on him, Nick. Heard tell you can catch more flies with sugar than with vinegar. Yeah, I know, but I don't happen to be hunting flies. Come on, get. Just coming over to see you. Why? What's the matter? I just thought you'd like to know that Audra's got us worried. She seems pretty upset since she heard about that inquest. Inquest. Seeger told the sheriff you weren't even in the room when it happened. Oh, well, you know Seeger. He's lying. Is he? Well, Audra finally broke down. She said the same things. Now, Will, what is all this about? She said you could tell us. But there must be some mistake. Oh, no, no. No, 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 no mistake. She's holding something back. There's no question she's scared, and so are you. Are you going to tell me why, Will? Now, if you're telling the truth, let go of my horse. I'm afraid this isn't going to wait. Look! All right, now, boy, you're going to start talking. Hey, now, that's enough! Oh, no, I've just started. Now, boy, you better start talking while you can. Let go! When you pull off. Hey! Well, just pure boy spirits, I suppose. Just trying to dig the truth out of them is all. Well, wait a minute. Well, brother Nick, with your usual flair, you've locked the cage before we caught the bird. Well, someone had to open him up. What are you doing here? I was hoping to talk to Will. some things to do, Pi. Kind of got behind. Well, I guess I just can't get used to the quiet around here. And I thought you'd be home for... What happened? Nothing, Pa. It wasn't nothing. You don't get cut up like that for nothing. Who done it to you? Well, you take my word for it, Pa. It doesn't matter. Well, it matters to me. Now, who done it? You have a run-in with somebody? I ask you a question, son. I like an answer. Now, who was it? Nick Barkley. Why? We had an argument was all. Just an argument. Over what? Look, Pa. A girl? Why? You know something they don't want you to say. Like maybe you never did go into that house after all. Maybe it was just Audra and Therese. Maybe it wasn't an accident. No, no, you're wrong, Pa. It's just like Seeger says. 
All you see is the girl. I don't count for nothing with you. You're wrong, Pa. Don't talk like that. All right, I'll give you one more chance. Say what you know. Tell me what it is Audrey don't want you to say. All right. I left some supper for you. Go in and get it. Open up! Come on, open up! Open up, or do I have to bust it open? Henry. <laughs> you. You're the one I want. That's a pretty face, all right. No wonder the boy can see nothing else. No wonder he couldn't see the blood on your hands. Yeah, he could have told me. You killed her, didn't you? You picked up that gun and you shot her down when she tried to get him back. Just a minute, Henry. Come on now, admit it! Henry! I think you better go. You'll pay for this. You'll all pay for it. For what you've done to Therese, what you've done to me. Pa! I heard you right out. It's just as well you're here. You can tell her for yourself. Tell her you can't protect her no more. Don't you look at him like that. He's gonna tell the truth. He can't cover up no more. I'm afraid no one can cover it up any longer, Henry. They couldn't tell you about Therese. Because the truth is, she came here for Will. She came because I wanted him back. Because she wanted him back. You say just what you mean. I think you know what I mean, Henry. I always thought you were a decent man. I'd heard rumors about her before, but I guess I never wanted to believe them. Then after the shooting, I had to find out for sure. I checked up on her in New Orleans. You went prying behind my back. I asked questions, I got answers. She was 17 when she took her first husband. Two years later, he was killed in a duel involving her honor. Four months later, Henry, she married the man that killed him. The lies, all lies! Less than a year after that, he brought suit for divorce. The charge was adultery. First her life, and now her good name. Don't punch true, he's right! He's telling the truth. She was no good. That's why Will had to run to get away from her. She thought that I was keeping him here and said all sorts of things. When I told her I was going to go talk to Will, she... She grabbed the gun and... He couldn't tell you. He couldn't hurt you. He loves you that much. See, if you change the line a little and put the railroad spur through here, yeah. it'll be better for both of us. That's pretty fine orchard land. Put in a crop of peaches, apricots, plums, and that'll cut the loading costs down, way down. That's a good idea you've got. He got it. <laughs> I learned them pretty fair, huh? Pretty fair. Mother's setting the table for lunch. We were hoping you'd stay. Well, yes or no? It'll be a pleasure, Audra. I'll join you in a minute. It's good to see you smile again, Henry. Well, I'll tell you, Jared. 
Deep down, I guess, I always knew about Therese. But I put blinders on, made a deal with myself. After all those empty years, I tried to buy what time I had left. You had two good years. She was so young and pretty, always laughing. Can't be sorry for that. Let's have lunch. Nothing to fear now, Neymar. The red spots and the fire in your head will pass. My medicine will make them go away. White man has medicine to drive off evil spirits. They're not evil spirits. It's a sickness. Medicine man says only spirits can fill a man with fire. The medicine man is wrong. He has seen spots before. They are chindi, the mark of death. When they come, all die. Not all. Not with proper medicine. Only medicine man has medicine to drive off the evil spirits. Only medicine man. Neymar. Neymar. You must stay here until you are well. If you go back now, the whole tribe will get sick. Go to see medicine man. No. Neymar, stay. Neymar, die. Neymar, wait. Neymar. Neymar, listen. Try to understand. Listen. Listen. If you go back now, the sickness will spread. Neymar, stay. Neymar, die. Neymar. Wait! Neymar! Wait, Neymar, wait! If you go back, the whole tribe will die! The whole tribe? This desert gets hotter every year. Too bad Father Andre didn't build his mission in Alaska. Oh, if the Eskimos had needed medical care as much as the Paiutes, he probably would have. <laughs> I suppose he would have. 
Well, where's this fellow who's supposed to meet you? I don't know. I was wondering the same thing. Father Andre say what he looks like? No, just that his name is Simon Carter and he's a professional hunter. Well, I guess we better make a few inquiries. We're pulling out, Mr. Barkley. Better get aboard. Jared, you're going to miss the coach. And you'll miss that trial in Carson City. Now, if you think I'm going to leave you frying out here in this oh, hot sun... I won't sun. fry long. If he doesn't show up, I'll hire a buggy and drive out there myself. Come on, sir. We're behind schedule. Oh, Jared, I have been coming out here for years. I could get to the mission blindfolded. Well, all right. Now, I'll meet you at the mission day after tomorrow. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Dust, you're gonna ruin that fancy dress of yours. You must Barkley. Mr. Carter? Well, I suppose it'll take you out of that mission. I'd almost given you up. Well, you saw my wagon standing right over there, didn't you? Well, I expected you to be waiting here when the stage arrived. <laughs> you know, point and boiling and a hot sun, you know what happened? Yes, well, I had the same idea. All this stuff of yours? Mm-hmm. Thought you was only staying a couple of days. I am, I am. Heavy. Well, if they're too heavy, it's gonna cost you extra, because I'm gonna need some help, and there ain't no volunteers in this heat. Very well. I told you to be careful. There are medicine bottles in there. Medicine bottles? What for? The mission. I bring a supply every year. What, are you some kind of nurse or something? No, just an old friend of Father Andre's trying to help out. Oh. Well, a bunch of mosquito root would be just as good. That's what them paiutis use mostly when they're sick. They're entitled to adequate medicine care, the same as anybody else. Maybe. But what they use is mosquito root. What the sun don't boil out of them, the mosquito root does. I'm quite familiar with the medicinal qualities of mesquite root, Mr. Carter. Well, the goose. You think it's fancy to throw your money around like that? Ain't my lookout. Any medicine in Asia? No. Now, right, let's get started. I'll drive. <laughs> Week. <laughs> that silly little hat of yours ain't much use in this sun, is it? Most desert wagons have a sunshade over the seats. Well, la de da <laughs> Mine's broke. I just ain't had a chance to fix it. Now have some water. Hmm? Sure. <sighs> May I have your bottle? Yes, ma'am. There you go. Hey, give me that. What are you doing? You ain't got no call to do that. It was rusty. Well, you know, I ought to charge you extra. That's just a simple waste of good drinking whiskey. Yeah! Lovely 
seems to be here. You uh, get the medicines out of the sun. I'll look for Father Andre. Me? I thought a couple of them paiutis could do that. Well, there doesn't seem to be any around. Father Andre. In here, Victoria. Father Andre. I've been waiting for you. Thank heavens you've come. What is it? What happened? Oh. My goodness, you're burning up. Don't be alarmed, Victoria. It's nothing serious. Only measles. Measles? Several weeks ago, I treated a child who had them. How long have you been lying here? Well, the symptoms just started to get bad a little while ago. Is there any quinine? Yes, but there isn't time. You must get Simon and tell him. Our wagon's unloaded, Padre. It's two bucks you owe me. Simon, you must go after Neymar. Neymar? What chief book kind of son what for? He has measles, too. <laughs> he thinks only the medicine man can save him. Measles? He left several hours ago. You must stop him before he reaches the tribe. But measles are c c c contagious, ain't they, Padre? Of course. That's why you must leave at once. Yeah. Yeah, I'm leaving, Padre. I'm leaving right now. I, uh, I'm going right back to town. Oh, well, Simon, you're the best tracker in the area. Now, you're the only one capable of overtaking him in time. Yeah, I know. I'm going to stay... I say the best striker, too. I got business in town, Padre. I, I got very important business. Simon, wait. Simon. Victoria, tell him, tell him. Yes, yes, I will. Now, you rest. You rest. Mr. Carter. Perhaps you don't understand. Indians have no resistance to measles. If Neymar gets back to camp, he's liable to start an epidemic that could wipe up the entire tribe. Everybody's got to die sometime. Yes, but if you bring Neymar back, it won't be necessary for anyone to die. I won't. It? I've seen white men with that measles disease. They generally wind up with the cough and sickness. Oh, that's ridiculous. As long as you stay out in the fresh air and sunshine, there's very little danger of getting the disease. And even if you do, it's not that serious for us. Oh, no. If I get it, who's going to help me? Them Paiutes? No, nobody. Nobody ever has. Didn't you hear what I said? I said he's liable to start an epidemic that could wipe out the entire tribe. Now, that means women and children. Or doesn't that mean anything to you? Lady, lady, I ain't got time to go traipsing all over the desert looking for some sick engine. Now, there's two businessmen coming in from San Francisco two days from now. They're going to pay me $100 to guide them on the buffalo hunt. Is Mama Flory still in town? Well, the midwife lady? Yeah. Well, bring her back as quickly as you can. I want her to look after Father Andre. <laughs> if I cut you, maybe she don't want to catch that measles disease either. <laughs> she is not as timid as you are, Mr. Carter. And tell her she's to stay with him until I get back. You're back? From where? I'm going after Neymar. Huh? Oh, no. No, lady, you, you, you don't know what you're saying. Oh, yes, I do. I've known Neymar since he was a child, and I, I think he'll listen to me. Listen to you. You ain't going to get within shouting distance of that engine. He's only got about three hours head yes, start on he's you. he's on foot and he's ill. I'll be riding Father Andre's horse. No, no, it ain't going to make no, no difference. Now, there's 50 miles of desert out there between here and that Paiute camp. Before you get 10 miles, you're going to be lost. Well, I visited Chief Bocana's camp a lot when I was a young girl, and I, I, I think I can still remember the way. No, no, no. That desert's changing. It's changing all the time, even the water holes. Remember, that just ain't good enough. Well, if that's the only way. All right, lady. All right. I'll go get Mama Flores for you. Boy, you got some peculiar ideas. Real peculiar.
Hi. Hi. Well, you look kind of down the mouth. What's the matter? I spent three months knitting that shawl for Father Andre and then forgot to have Mother pack it. Oh, that's too bad. Well, everyone sends something but me. You think I just didn't care enough to bother. Well, why don't you put it in with that extra crate of tools I'm having freighted out there? It'll get to him before she gets home. Keith, you're a genius. Well, you're just finding that out. <sighs> Mother must be at the mission by now. I wonder what she's doing. Oh, probably resting, talking to Father Andre. Catching up on her thinking. You know, you ought to try that sometime, catching up on your thinking. Well, what'd I say? It's not what you said, it was how you said it. But... You can fix your own lunch. Mother, don't stay away too long. Woman. She went out after Neymar. She did, huh? Bad damn it, she said she would, but I thought you'd talk her out of it. I tried to, but there was no other way. Someone had to go, Simon. When did she take out? Shortly after you left. Huh. She, she got to follow the water holes? She hoped to pick up his tracks uh, around Joshua Springs. Joshua Springs? What's the matter? Nothing. Nothing, Padre. It's all right. I, I, it's just I gotta get back to town. Joshua Springs. A fool woman.
I still don't know how to thank you. I never dreamed the regular water holes would be dry. Well, they are. New holes, four or five miles northeast. <laughs> Wish you'd told me that before I started out. You said you knew the I way. Know, I know. I was foolish, but Joshua Springs have always been full. Anyhow, I'm very grateful. I know I've put you to a lot of trouble. You'll have more trouble. I miss them buffalo hunts. Oh, you won't. I'm feeling much better. By the time it cools off, I'll be able to ride. No, you won't. I'll rig up a drag, the horse can pull you. That won't be necessary. I'm used to hardships. I recover quickly. You look kind of puny to me. Uh, how long do you think it will take to catch up with Neymar? Neymar? Traveling on foot. He can't be too far ahead, and once you pick up his tracks... What are you talking about, lady? I ain't picking up no tracks. We're heading back to our mission. The mission? Oh, no, no. Yes. Not if we delay any longer, he'll reach the tribe. Look, well, that Paiute ain't my lookout. I had enough trouble chasing after you. Well, we're so close. We've come this far. What difference does a few more hours May make? May one half that difference if, if I don't get back to them buffalo hunters. I'll pay you twice what they offered, $200. <laughs> no, I can't take Why that kind of money Why not? It's just as much of a, a business woman? deal as driving me out to the mission. Don't you see? You won't be getting nothing out of it. Oh. You put a price on everything, don't you, Mr. Carter? Huh? All right, you go back to the mission I'm going on. No, you ain't. You can't. It turns on in. A long time ago, I was pinned under a rock slide in this desert. Chief Bocana left me his water gourd and walked all day to bring help. Now, I'm going on if I have to crawl. I tell you, them paiutes ain't my lookout. Now, why do you keep pestering me about them all the time? It just ain't my lookout. All right. Fool woman. I'll find that engine for you. But when I do, I ain't getting close to him. You're going to have to turn him around, head him back the other way. It's a deal. He's getting a little wobbly on his feet. He's probably laying over the next water hole. Get his strength back. Well, how far is it? Can we reach it before dark? Well, you can keep up. Don't worry, Mr. Carter. I'll keep up. All right. <laughs> to quit following him. He must be somewhere up there in the rocks. We have to let him know we're trying to help him. Oh, he don't want to help. He just wants to get back that medicine. Then man. we've got to make him understand. You ain't got to say nothing. I'm engines like lizards. They just melt into the ground. Neymar! Neymar, this is Victoria Barkley. Can you hear me? We've come to help you. We bring medicine, strong medicine. Come out, Neymar! Come out! 
we had any sense, we'd turn around and go back. Oh, that's impossible, and you know it. That engine's got the drop on us, lady. If he wanted to kill us, we'd be dead by now. Maybe he don't want to kill us now. We keep dogging him, he's liable to change his mind. Nama is not a murderer. A scared engine's apt to do anything. I'm not afraid to keep my part of the bargain. I expect you to be man enough to keep yours. You keep siding out like this. I'm going to miss that buffalo hunt. Anybody's been here for weeks. Are you sure he came this way? Yeah, if he wanted any water, he did. This is the only hole for miles. Uh, don't bother filling your canteen. The water's foul, that poison yucca. Oh. <laughs> An Indian friend of yours is pretty foxy, anyhow. You figured our canteens would be just about empty by now. That's so unlike a Paiute. Water's so scarce, they almost worship it. You just don't know Paiutes like you think you do. You don't know nothing like you think you do. That's what got us into this mess. I never should have come out after you in the first place. Should have stayed in town, mind my own business, waiting for them buffalo hunters. Blaming each other won't get our canteens filled. Now let's get started for the next water hole. I ain't getting started for nowhere. I'm just going to drink me a little whiskey. Well, that will only make you thirstier. Suppose you just let me worry about that. All right, I suppose you could use some rest. Sure, love the spoon. <laughs> Have you that one? Yes, Mr. Carter. Yeah. How about, uh, I knew a girl lived on the hill. If she wasn't... I've heard that one, too, Mr. Carter. Huh? You don't think much of me, there. How can I when you don't think much of yourself? I'm as good as anybody. Then why don't you act it? Oh, come on now, don't go get me all muddled up with them fancy notions of yours, because I just ain't gonna listen to them. I'm gonna get me a little drunk, and then I'm gonna get me a little sleep, and then I'm gonna get back to town going that buffalo hunt. Well, I thought that's what you had in mind. Why shouldn't I have in mind? Uh, why should I go out there and get myself killed off with a bunch of no-good mangy engines? <laughs> Well, them highfalutin ideas, they come easy to rich folks like you. They're typical. They come easy on a, on a full belly. I had the same ideas when I was poor. Poor? What do you know about poor? You think going into town without new dress on being poor? <sighs> My folks was trash. We didn't have no money. Nothing. Nothing but a little one-mule dirt farm. <laughs> and one night, one night my old man got drunk, you know? Hit the mule right in the head with an axe. Killed him. Then we didn't have nothing but dirt. Uh, you know, back there in Arkansas, where I was come from, you know, you know what they used to call us? No Count Carters. Yep. Up till the time I was seven years old, I thought my first name was No Count. Did you ever do anything to disprove it? Why should I? And don't tell me that stuff about for my self-respect, because I don't believe in any of that applesauce. I don't believe in none of that. Isn't that, uh, that rifle in your saddle an army carbine? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Going home present for all the released prisoners of war. Mm-hmm. 
Well, if you don't believe in anything, why did you fight in the war? Because I believed in an empty belly. That's what. Me and my brother joined up because we was hungry. We fought for the Confederacy till their rations started running out. Then we got ourselves captured and let the Union Army feed us. Where's your brother now? No, I don't know. I lost track of him after the war. I lost track of everybody. Oh. I'm sorry, Mr. Carter. Mm. Ah. Here you go. I'm releasing you from your part of the bargain. Just tell me where the next water hole is. You mean you're going out after that engine alone? That's right. Well, you're a fool, woman. Don't you know he's just waiting out there someplace to kill you? I don't think he'll kill me. But it's a chance I'll have to take. Which way, Mr. Carter? Hold on. You hold on just a minute. Hey, you're just trying to get me all muddled up again. I know. You're trying to make me feel guilty, ain't oh, you? No, no, no. Not at all. I've prevailed on you enough already. Prevailed? Ha! You think a lot of yourself, don't you, woman, huh? Well, let me tell you something. If I come out here, it's because I want to. If I keep going on, it's because I want to. Nobody prevails on Simon Paul Carter. Huh. Spring up there, them rocks someplace. We'll go get the canteens when the horses fill them up. Now stay close to me, because I don't want to go chasing all over the desert looking for you again. Now come on. Spring right over there. Oh. Well, it's large enough to bathe in. Bathe? Well, the horses need a rest anyway. Okay, we've got enough trouble without you getting waterlogged. A nice, cool bath will do us both good. Both? <laughs> Lady, that... Well, that uh, just ain't decent. Mr. Carter, we don't have to share the water hole. We'll take turns. Bobby's liable to get a heart attack opening up their pores in this heat. Cold water doesn't open the pores, it closes them. Now we'll fill our canteens first. Your turn, Mr. Carter. Well, no, I, uh, I just don't hold too much with, uh, you know, a lot of that bathing. It uh, ain't natural. Neither is your aroma. Aroma? What are you talking about? Well, you said Indians have sharp noses. I think that's what made it so easy if you made me to find us. <laughs> you got a mean streak in your lady. Oh, you got a real mean streak. What? What did you do? Mr. Carter? Who leave a rocket? Mr. Carter? Are you all right? Some are torn and they gonna rock. <laughs> What's funny? Do I strike me to take all my clothes off? Well, it is customary. With a woman around? You ain't got no shame, lady. You just ain't got no shame at all. Get out of here! No! Get out of here! Get out! 
you to run when I told you to. I did. He's coming out, I think. Yeah. He's after that rifle of mine. No, no, you might kill him. Is, is him or us, lady? He didn't come out here to kill. Oh, give me that. Yeah. Well, now you tell it, lady. Well, he's really got his pin down. He stick our noses out and he'll blow him right off. Sam, this arrow has got to come out. Yeah. <laughs> ah! Ow! Oh. I'm sorry. Right. Please, sir. September. Hang on, Sam. I'm sorry. Thank you. 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 Otherwise, you'll get blood poisoning. Oh, this sinful, sinful waste. Oh, it's the best thing it's ever been used for. All right? What are you doing that for? Stop that. The sun will burn you under a crisp. Well, it can't be helped. One has to be banished to keep the dirt out of it. You know, lady, you, you're acting like I'm something like... Like I'm somebody important. Oh, Simon. I think you're the bravest, most important man I have ever known. You're right, ma'am. I am. Why didn't you wake me? Oh, it's, it's all right. It's just with it. Engines are. Oh, I'll be all right. I'll go. Oh, I wish go. we had one of those saddle blankets. Yeah. Should we had some of that whiskey of mine that you was splashing around like water? Yeah. Man, what's... What you... Well, chilling after a wound can be dangerous. And you huh? need outside warmth. Huh? You know, it ain't too, too bad at that, Captain Angus. No, that's just... Well, it's because it's nothing like the whiskey which will help me, but... You're going to be all right. Oh, yeah. Sure. No, I never had a woman to care for me like this. Oh, not that I ain't been around women, you know. I know lots of them. Oh, yes, yes, of oh. course. It's just a, well, I don't think any of them really cared about me. They, they wouldn't take it. I'm not supposed to really care about me. I guess, I guess nobody ever really cared about me. You know, Simon, it's too bad you lost track of your family. Mm -hmm. Yes, but uh, I guess your family think a heap of you. Oh, I think they do. Sure they do. I know I'm very proud of them. I'd like you to meet them someday. 
Honest? Huh? You think they'd be, be interested to make a raunchy old buffalo hunter like me? Oh, Simon. They would be honored. That old boy. That's why you are some lady. You know that? You are really some. <laughs> It's a little late in life to be getting measles, but there's no question that's just what I've got. Well, you should be in bed, shouldn't you? It was time for prayers. I couldn't put them off any longer, not with your mother and Mr. Carter out there in the desert. Out in the desert? What are you talking about? Nima, Chief Bokana's son. They've gone after him. They're trying to stop him before he gets back to the tribe. The poor boy has measles, too. Come on, Father, let's get you back to bed. Is there anyone here to take care of you? Yes, uh, Mama Flores is in the kitchen preparing something. Why the devil couldn't she have waited? Even a sick Indian travels quickly, Jared. She couldn't wait. Well, how long ago did she leave? Yesterday afternoon. Simon Carter knows the desert as well as these Indians. He'll find her. Well, if they're not back by sunset, I'm gonna go after them. Without a guide? Without anything, if I have to. Simon, are you all right? <laughs> yeah, well, fine as a fiddle. Uh, you know, we better get started, Miss Barkley. That engine got a pretty good jump on us last night. Simon, I'm sorry I got you into this. Very sorry. I was so sure Neymar would listen to me, but... Uh, you were right. I've been a fool. Oh, everybody's been a fool one time or another, I suppose. And don't you worry. I'll get that engine back for you. No, Simon, you are in no condition. You saved my life last night, Miss Barkley. Just dragging himself along on his hands and knees. Oh, poor Neymar. He's still alive. He can't be very far from here. He's probably turtled in someplace over there. Turtled in? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, an engine will do that. Dig himself into the ground, you know, cover himself up. It's a lot cooler, about a foot down. Well, if he is doing that, that means he can't see no, us. No, no, I didn't we... say for sure that he's turtled in. He could be playing possum. He's just waiting for us to show. I'll give him a target. Thank you, you. You stay here.
to nurse me? Oh, it's a deal, Simon. It's a deal. <laughs> See to the bags. I'm sorry you missed your hunt, Simon. No, that don't matter. There'll be other buffalo hunts. Well, uh, I guess this is a uh, goodbye. Huh? I'll be back again next year. You will? Uh-huh. I'll have the shade on the wagon fixed by then. Good. becomes a way of life. I hear tell that once it took the judge two weeks of deliberation to decide as to whether or not to deny or sustain an objection. That's a lie. It took less than ten days. By the time he'd made his decision, I'd forgotten what it was I objected about. <laughs> well, in that case, I think I'd better sit down. Heath, that's an apocryphal story. However... I always do try to see every side of a thing before rendering a decision. Uh, Jared, would you uh, lend me a dollar, please?
Thank you, gentlemen, for a most stimulating and rewarding evening. Thank you, Victoria, for being so lovely and such a good cook. Flattery, Adam, will only get you another invitation for dinner next week. Any evening these boys feel like another game of fool. Who would have thought that beneath those judicial robes lies the heart of a thief? Ah, uh, Jared, if this ever gets out, my judicial reputation is ruined. <laughs> Mr. Barclay? Please, get the doctor. Well, let's get him over the couch. Thank you. Very kind. Mr. Barclay? That's right. Mr. Barclay? My name is Polino Arieta. I have just escaped from the Pinewood Jail, where I was held as a murderer. I wish you to be my lawyer. Well, I wish you'd asked me that before you escaped. I didn't think I had a chance in the court, so I ran away. But I am innocent. Now I wish to stand and fight them. I remember how you saved my, my cousin Arturo. I think you must be the man to save me also. Do you accept? I will see about that as soon as we take care of this wound. One more thing. I am a Basque. In Pinewood, they call some of us Basques murderers and traitors and foreigners. I am an anarchist. Lost a lot of blood, but he's a strong boy. Doctor said he'd be fine after a couple of days' rest. Fine, eh? For hanging? He should have kept running until he was out of the state or across the border. Why, Your Honor, that doesn't sound very much like you. I'll chalk it up to its being way past an old man's bedtime. Anyway, we're not just judge and lawyer here. We're two old and very good friends. And as a friend, Jared, I hope you haven't decided to represent him. Why not? You're going to be on the bench, aren't you? That's besides the point. I'm a county judge, Jared. I'll have to preside unless I get lucky and fall deathly ill, get run over by a team of wild horses. <laughs> Jared, when you defended that Basque two years ago, it was an unpopular cause. And he was only accused of petty theft. Well, a lot's happened since then. I don't have to tell you those people up around Pinewood have been scared witless by this anarchist philosophy. Oh, that's a lot of nonsense, Adam. Well, the entire Basque community is only represented by a small minority, and probably only a few of them are anarchists. There's nothing rational about fear. And there's no atmosphere less conducive to holding a fair trial. Win or lose, you're going to make more enemies than any man needs in a whole lifetime. And get paid off for your labor in a bottle of Basque wine. Ah. A dozen bottles of good Basque wine and a sheepskin coat. Now, that's what that Basque paid me two years ago to defend him. And besides, Adam, the boy might be innocent. He's an admitted anarchist. He believes in violent overthrow of government. Object. Therefore, he believes in personal violence, since governments are composed of people. Your Honor, I object. He... <laughs> Sustained. Cigar. No, thank you. After all, we're not trying the boy for a philosophy, are we, but for an overt action. Ideas can't kill people, only people can. But I'd better stop that. 
We'll probably be arguing this in court, won't we? Yes, we will. And to think it was my intention to try to talk you out of taking the case. Well, next time I'll know better. I'll keep my big fat mouth shut, take my three dollars and go straight home. Well, if it's any consolation to you, Adam, I decided to take the case before I came downstairs. Now, where did Victoria put my hat? And do you know why? Hmm? Because I know that no matter how unpopular the case, I can present my client before a judge that is fair and just, no matter what the atmosphere. Who do you want? You just can't come barging in here. You have no right. Oh, I got the right. I think you take a look upstairs. You better hold on. You can't go up those steps. Shut up. You on the stairs. I believe you heard the gentleman. OK, Vic, hold it a second. My name's Walt Baker. I'm Sheriff of Pinewood Way. I believe we met once before, Mr. Barclay. What are you waiting for? Hold it right there. You do have a warrant, Sheriff. Now, look, Mr. Barclay. I'm chasing an escaped murderer, and I have every reason to believe that he's holed up right here. Well, he's upstairs in one of the bedrooms, Sheriff. Why didn't you just ask? Well, I just thought that I knew we hit him. There was some blood. I'll take him off your hands now, Mr. Barclay. He's in no condition to be moved. He busted out of my jail, and I'm taking him back with me. One way or another, he goes back with me tonight. And if he dies along the way, chalk it up, it'll save the state expenses for the trial. Now, step aside, Mr. Barclay. Yes, Sheriff? You take him. We're ill-equipped to stop you. But mark this. If he does die en route back to your jail, or even if he makes it safely and then some accident befalls him, you, Sheriff, you and your deputy will stand trial in my court for murder. Well, Judge, I didn't know that you were here. OK, Vic, the judge is here. You will take full responsibility for the prisoner. Is that right, Your Honor? That's right. Mr. Barkley. <sighs> Many thanks, Adam. Yes, Jared. It's beginning to shape up, even now, as quite a trial. I thought we'd already said goodbye. Heath and I have uh, been doing some thinking. Yeah, I know what you've been thinking about. He's already told me. Now, it's not that I don't appreciate the offer of the company. Now, you're going to run into just a little bit more in trouble up there in Pinewood. Oh, I don't think so. I think the judge straightened that out pretty well with the sheriff. The sheriff is one man. From what I understand, the feelings are running pretty high against the Basques in that town. Oh, I'll bet you turn out to be nothing more than a routine lawyer's job. Now, there's nothing routine lawyer's job about this. Now, look, Nick. It's been a long time since you've asked me to mend a fence or chase a stray, right? This is a little bit different. Just give us your best wishes. We can use all of those we can get, right, Polino? No, I'm not worried. I'm innocent. Besides, I have the best lawyer in the world. So long, Nick. Get up there. Bask. This man is in my custody. I'm delivering him to your sheriff. Oh, we'll take care of that for you, mister. Take him. Come on! Let's bring him up! Let's bring this murderer and foreigner to the nearest tree. Now, bring that rope along. Let him go, boys. I said, let him go. What's going on? Just in the nick of time, huh, Sheriff? I don't think so, Counselor. Good folks were just making sure that the prisoner was headed in the right direction. I'll take him off your hands now, Barkley. All right, break it up. Go on about your business. You staying around a piece, mister? That's right. 
Good. It'll give us a chance to get better acquainted. Maybe find out what kind of man would defend a Go on now, Russ. Move it along. You got to understand, Russ, Mr. Barkley. He didn't have any more against them Basque anarchists than the rest of us did. Till your boy there killed his brother, Bill Miller. I never killed Danny Miller. How could I? I spent the whole day with my friend Julio up in the hills. He'll swear to that. I'll prove it to you. Well, you know, we don't have to prove it to him. We'll prove it in court. Now, I'm going to have to leave for a little while. You'll be safe here. I think the sheriff will see to that. Oh, Mr. Barkley. When you see my friend, will you have him bring my dog? He'll be lost without me. A man like that, one way or another, he's bound to get hurt. You'd ask me that before you tried to kill me. I thought you were from the town. We Basques have had much trouble here. They have threatened to run us off our land, even to kill us. Well, I'm Jared Barkley, Paulino Arietta's lawyer. Hey, Kurzawatan, and you think I almost killed you. Paulino, where is he? I dropped him off in town. He's going to stand trial. That was a mistake. They will kill him here. I don't think so. Paulino does not stand a chance in your courts. I think he stands a better chance fighting for justice in our courts than you people stand fighting the townspeople with your guns. Besides, we've got an eyewitness to testify for us. Yes, Julio. Now, he's the one I want to talk to. Of course. Follow me. Sister, you bring an honored guest. Welcome to our village, Mr. Barkley. It's my honor, senor. See that Mr. Barkley's horse is worth it than fed. Quickly. Please, Mr. Barkley. Rosa, some coffee and some of our delicious Basque bread. Mr. Barkley, we have heard rumors that you are going to defend Paulino. This is true. This is true. Wonderful, wonderful. With Gerard Barkley to defend him, our poor Paulino may yet have some small hope for justice. I was in court when you defended Arturo. A masterful job. Thank you, sir. But, of course, things have changed since then. Animosity has grown. The town has declared war on us. Seems to me you've kind of declared war on them, too. I was almost one of your casualties. I thought he was from the town. Terrible thing, war. Innocents caught in a crossfire. But, naturally, we just defend ourselves. Naturally. But as Polino's lawyer and a friend of your people, I must insist that you refrain from any more acts of provocation. But of course, we are the provoked, never the provocateurs. Well, that's reassuring. Although I've heard that there are those among you who preach violence, even anarchy. There are those amongst us who believe that law is evil when it operates only for the protection of the privileged. And it is the privilege to operate the law. You know, if you really believe that, you must either think I'm a dishonest man or a fool for having come here. <laughs> I am telling you what the anarchists believe. Maybe you can free Paulino and prove them wrong. I can try. He wants to speak with Julio. Naturally. And what Mr. Barclay wants, Mr. Barclay shall have. Julio! You will be honored to meet Paulino's lawyer, Senor Gerald Barkley. Hello.
Paulino tells me you were with him on the day of the murder. Is that true? Yes, that day. I think it was that day. I am a shepherd, senor. Paulino and I, we spend many days together in the hills. One day is like another. Is there some question in your mind about that particular day? I will help my friend Paulino in any way I can. You can help him most by simply telling the truth. I will do what I can do. You're a witness in this case, an eyewitness. I have told you I will speak for Paulino. It would help him more if you would speak to me first. Now, Julio, you must understand that your friend's life may be in your hands. I need to go over your testimony very carefully. I have left my flock unattended. I must go to them. Tomorrow. Yes, you will come again tomorrow. And now, if there is nothing more... There is one thing. Paulino's dog. He asked that you bring it to him at the jail. Yes. I will try. Tomorrow. He's only a boy, very young. He's sick about his friend Paulino. You understand. Well. Thank you for the coffee and bread. Our pleasure, Senor Parker. Rosa, take Senor Papi to his horse. Anything we can do for you and Paulino, you will please call on us. I'll do that. Hello, Don Bernardo. Hello, Don Bernardo. How are you? Huh? <laughs> Filthy sheepdog. Now, I'm a fair-minded man, but mark my words. If he yaps too much, out he goes. Thank you, Mr. Barclay. You see, he's an ordinary dog. He's a nobleman. <laughs> Julio, how is everything? Fine. And the wife? She's well. My flock. In good hands. Good. Thank you. yourself shaven, Counselor? I'd like to see my client, Sheriff. Your gun, Mr. Sparkly. What happened? That'll be all, Sheriff. Sure you don't want to lodge a complaint? Well, there's nothing to complain about. You were right. I cut myself shaving. to you. When did it happen? How? How many were there? Oh, maybe a half dozen. It was Miller's brother, Russ, huh? He was one of them. I couldn't see their faces. They wore hoods. But he wasn't one of them. Oh, cowards. 
townspeople. They're all cowards. All cowards were a hoot. They were Basques, Polino. What? Basques. Oh, you're wrong. I couldn't believe it myself. But the one who whipped me, the one who seemed to be their leader, the way he stood, the way he moved, he reminded me unmistakably of Francisco. Oh, you're lying. They wore rope sole shoes, just like you. Well, that proves nothing. Why, the townspeople, that would have been a very clever trick to wear rope sole shoes. There was a sheepdog there. How many of the townspeople have sheepdogs? But you were beaten out of your mind. Why, your eyes, your mind would play tricks on you. Oh, is this some kind of a trick you're playing on me? I wish it were. Why? Why, is it possible? My friends? People I love them and live with them? Is it possible they're going to turn against me? Why? I've asked myself that same question. Now, the townspeople, they'd like to take you out and string you up right now, wouldn't they? Yes, they made that clear, sir. But your friends, they want you to stand trial. Well, of course they do, because I'm innocent. Because they want you to be found guilty. What are you trying to say? To be found guilty and hanged, thereby proving that all foreigners get no justice in America, that they should become anarchists and fight to overthrow the government and its laws. You stop that, I warn you. They're using you, Paulino, and they'll continue to use you. Only I scared them. Scared them that I might get you free and rob them of their martyr. Get out! You're no longer my lawyer. All right, Paulino. I can get out. Then you'll have accomplished what they failed to do last night, get rid of me. Send you to court with no defense, another black eye for American justice. Now believe me, Polino, I want to be your friend and your lawyer, because I honestly believe I can get you free. What do you say? All right. Barclay, if what you say is true, then how come Julio comes here as my friend to bring my dog, to bring me hope? If what you say is true, if my own people want to see me hang, then how come Julio comes here to testify for me? You answer me that! animals in town. They will stop at nothing. Please sit down. Coffee for Senor Barclay. I was hopeful violence could be avoided. I want to talk to Julio. Julio is gone. Sold his flock, left his house behind. I see. Terrible, terrible thing for Julio to do. With Paulino, you, all of us, counted on Julio's testimony. But I can understand his fear. What was he afraid of? What we are all afraid of, of being murdered. And Julio in particular, he has heard their threats. We have all heard what they will do to Julio if he testifies. Who made those threats? Come now, senor. The town, the good people of Pinewood. The same good people who drag you from your bed, beat you. What are you going to do now, Mr. Barclay? Julio, our eyewitness, our one chance of freeing Paulino, gone. Julio may be gone. But not our chance to free Paulino. Come now, senor. We both know that without an eyewitness, Paulino stands no chance. Little enough chance in your court with an eyewitness. How long have you lived in this country, Francisco? What has that to do with anything? I was just wondering how long it took you to learn to hate us so. Or did you hate before you came here? Hate? Ah, far from it. I came here with heart full of hope. You see, Mr. Barclay, I believed all your lies. The land of the free, the home of the brave. We welcome you with open arms. We welcome you. 
You, you stinking dirty Basque. Welcome you, so long as you stay in your own little backyard. No, senor. I didn't hate when I came here, but I learned. The good people in Pinewood are excellent teachers. If Paulino were convicted and hanged, you'd gain recruits, wouldn't you? Well, don't count on his being a martyr for your cause. Admit it. You cannot win without Julio's testimony. It would have made it easier. But you see, I don't have to prove Paulino innocent. The state of California has to prove him guilty beyond a reasonable shadow of a doubt. I hope you'll attend the trial, Francisco. You may learn something. Seat, ma'am. Courthouse burnt down last July and never did get it rebuilt. Thank you. Hold it. Any complaints? It is your country. I did not expect to be treated as an equal. Jared. Mother, what are you doing here? I came to watch the trial. You don't mind, do you? <laughs> Believe me, I can use all the moral support I can get. Yes, I can see that. Oh, oh yes, well, don't pay any attention to that. It may give me a little sympathy with the jury. Just sit down right there. Now, you say that this friend of yours came running into this very bar. I was standing right over there. I was having a few drinks, and Pete came running in, and he said... Objection, hearsay. He said that dirty Basque anarchist gunned down my brother Bill in cold blood. Let the record show that dirty Basque anarchist refers to the defendant. Your Honor, I object to any portion of this hearsay testimony being admitted to the record. Let's see where it's going, and then I'll rule on it. In my opinion, Your Honor, the jury has heard more than enough already. Any more questions for this witness? Yes. When Pete Hawkins came running into this bar, did he say that he had actually seen the defendant shoot your brother? He's seen that Basque fire them shots clear as I'm seeing you. He's a liar. Order. Objection. If I have to warn your client again, Counselor, he'll be charged with contempt. And I insist, Your Honor, that you make a ruling on this hearsay testimony before it becomes indelibly engraved in the minds of the jury. You'll have ample opportunity to cross-examine Mr. Miller on his testimony. Mr. Miller's testimony, Your Honor, is what's at issue here. He's testifying to what a third party claims he saw. If indeed there is a Pete Hawkins at all. Well, everybody in town knows Pete Hawkins. Well, now, that's most reassuring. I'd like to meet the gentleman myself, right here in the witness box, where he can be duly cross-examined. Well, uh... He got himself a good job up San Francisco way. He said he'd try to get down here for the trial, but if he couldn't, uh, I could tell what he saw almost as good as he could. <laughs> Order! Your Honor. Counselor. Come in. Hello, Mother. How was dinner? Very nice. No, as a matter of fact, I don't even remember what I ordered. Adam hardly touched a bite, and you know how he likes food. He's very disturbed, John. Yes, I can imagine he Actually, would be. Actually, he couldn't or wouldn't talk about the trial, but I think we Mother, ought to... Mother, I don't think we should discuss it. I think we have to. You know, there were times in court today when you sounded as though... when you looked as though you hated him. Well, it's, it's been an emotional trial. No, 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 it's beyond that. All right, if you insist. Beyond that, I believe that our esteemed friend, Adam Cross, is doing everything in his power to hang an innocent man. I don't think you really believe that. 
He's making it awfully difficult for me to believe anything else. Jared, I was proud that you had the courage to defend Paulino, knowing he was an anarchist, knowing that he stood for everything you opposed. Mother, I am simply a lawyer defending a man on a specific charge of murder. Now, if it takes courage to do a thing like that, then there is something terribly wrong. All right, then there is something terribly wrong. But be careful how you fight it. Make Adam your friend, not your enemy. Make Adam my friend. Will you for one minute forget what he means to us? And try to remember the man that sat on that bench this afternoon, a frightened man. That's not true. I've known Adam for over 30 years. I've seen him face down a pack of killers. He's not afraid of the people in Pinewood. Oh, no, no. He's not afraid of the people in Pinewood. He's afraid of an idea, a word, anarchist. Now, believe me, that's an idea that frightens me, too. But this is no way to fight it. And I can only hope that Adam sees that before he makes Polino a martyr for a cause we all reject. No, no, you are wrong about Adam. You're judging him. And you're being as bigoted and narrow-minded as the people you condemn. Well, that may be. But the next time you see Adam, tell him this for me. That the sworn enemies of law are fear, ignorance, and violence. And we who serve the law must fight these specters wherever they raise their brutish heads. You won't have to remember it verbatim. Chances are Adam will. He wrote it. to set fire to the jail. Now, let me give fair warning, once and for all. Anyone caught committing such acts will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Now then, defense counsel has asked for a ruling concerning that portion of Mr. Miller's testimony as related to Peter Hawkins. The court rules that portion of the testimony is hearsay and should be stricken from the record. The jury will disregard it. How do you disregard something that is already in your mind, Mr. Barclay? Now, you say that on the afternoon of September 4th, you were nowhere near the ranch of the deceased William Miller. Is that correct? That's right. I was up in the hills with my sheep. Well, that's at least 10 miles away from where Mr. Miller was killed. And yet you heard Mr. Miller's brother state that there was a so-called eyewitness and Mr. Peter Hawkins, who saw you commit the crime. What do you say to that? I say that if this eyewitness was right here, I would call him. Object. The counsel is examining on the basis of hearsay testimony already stricken from the record. Stricken from the record, but not before it was heard in this court. Objection sustained. Loud and clear by every member of the jury. I'd like my client to respond to that testimony. I've already and then his honor can have both the testimony and the rebuttal stricken from the record. I ask your next question, counselor. Now, you say that you spent that entire day with your sheep. Is that correct? Yes, sir. From sunrise to sunset. Well, then, I take it that you're calling this so-called eyewitness, this Mr. Hawkins, a liar. I swear by everything I have holy that this man is a liar, yes. And I further plead, gentlemen, that the district attorney obtain a subpoena and force this Mr. Hawkins to come to this court and testify so that my client may face his accuser. I and just so doing, there might be several interesting questions that I could ask, such as, just where was this Mr. Hawkins hiding when he supposedly saw Felino fire the fatal shots? Or, why didn't he try to prevent the murder of his friend? Or, failing that, I object strenuously to counsel's clever tricks. He's trying to make the jury think that somebody else killed Miller. Objection sustained. We've already ruled that Mr. Miller's testimony is to be disregarded as hearsay. Now, let me warn you, don't bring it up again. I beg the court's pardon. Senor Arietta, are you an anarchist? Objection. The defendant's politics are not on trial. Either. Politics? I thought we were talking about a club that condones murder as a means to an end. The state of California is not going to take Polino Arietta's life just because his politics happen to be repugnant. Unless, of course, the state of California has rescinded the Bill of Rights. 
I will sustain the objection. The district attorney will rephrase his question. Well, now, let me say, uh, we can't talk about uh, Senior Arietti's politics, and um, we can't talk about what an eyewitness to the murder said, because, because that's hearsay. It um, <laughs> makes it makes it kind of difficult to uh, get at the truth. Now, me, if, if the defense uh, could produce an eyewitness to testify as to the innocence of Senior Arietti, well, I'd be pleased as punch to hear all about it. <laughs> no, sir, you get no objection from the state. Oh, now, as a matter of fact, I, I think I remember you, you had just such a witness, counsel, the uh, name of um, oh, Julio de Aguirre. Your Honor, this is totally irrelevant. Senior Arietta, do you believe in the violent overthrow of this government? Objection. Objection overruled. Let's see where he's heading before jumping him. Answer the question. Paulino, you don't have to answer that question. Mr. Barclay, I'd like to answer this question, if you don't mind. No, sir, I don't believe in violence. Except when the laws are bad. When they don't protect the common man. Then you just take the law into your own hands, right? Well, if this is the only way by which I can win justice, yes. Did you believe the law of Pinewood was protecting you and the other Basque sheep herders from the cattlemen? No, I... I believe that the law here is on the side of the cattlemen. Bill Miller was a cattleman, wasn't he? Well, I was told so. I didn't know him. That's enough reason to hate him. Objection. It's enough reason for an anarchist to kill him. Objection, Your Honor. I did not kill him. I didn't even know him. But they threatened us. They said that they would run us off the hills. They threatened to kill our sheep. The law was too slow for you. Hmm? Objection, Your Honor. That's a conclusion. So you just took the law right into your own hands. You took a gun into your own hands, and then you went hunting for Bill Miller. Objection. He's and leaving the witness. came out of his house, he mounted his horse. You shot him in the back. Objection. You killed him the way you'd kill a fly. Without remorse and without guilt. Because you have been poisoned. Poisoned in your heart and soul by a foreign political philosophy. Objection, Your Poison, Honor. So you can no longer reason right Your Honor, I object to this. Poison, so you are now a jungle like animal. A wild animal who kills anything that gets in his way. That's all I've got to say. Your Honor, I stated a number of objections which the bench did not reply to. I take it that they were denied. You take it very well, Counselor. I move for a mistrial. Denied. I request permission to approach the bench and lay foundation. You're in contempt. And you, sir, have lost control of this court by a series of judicial errors which have denied my client so much as a semblance of due process. This court is adjourned until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. I request to see his honor in his chambers. I will see defense counsel in this courtroom tomorrow morning, at which time I will rule on his motion. I would be impressed by your performance, Mr. Barclay, if we both didn't know that all your sound and fury signifies nothing, and that the wheels of your justice were long ago oiled to grind Paulino into the dust. Who is it? Victoria Barclay, may I come in? Sit down, please. I hope I'm not disturbing you. No, no, not at all. Can I, can I get you something? Coffee, some brandy or something? No, See, not a thing. There are certain advantages to having my chambers in the saloon. Thank you. Adam, last night Jared and I had words. Victoria, if this has any bearing on you the case... You know what he feels you're doing. Oh, yes. He's made that quite clear. Is he wrong? Victoria... You know I can't talk about the case. Forget the case. This is between two very old and very good friends. Now, last night, Jared said some things I couldn't, I wouldn't believe. But today in court, he... Well, you tell me. You tell me, and I'll walk out of here and never question you about this again. Is Jared wrong? Victoria, please. Is it's he very... wrong? Is he... It's a most complex case, Victoria. It's like an iceberg. 
90% of the issues are... Garrett says there's only one issue. Is Paulina guilty or innocent? He says you're frightened of what Paulina represents, and so I ask you once again, is Jared wrong? I'd like to see him. I'm going back to the hotel. I'll tell him. that their witness. I didn't ask you here to give you an explanation. There's no excuse for what I've done. You were right. I was frightened. And frightened men don't think very clearly. The simple truth is that I wanted Paulino Arietta to be guilty. And that's a judgment no judge may make. I'm declaring a mistrial. I wish you wouldn't do that, Adam. Jared, there's no way of reversing my judicial errors. I could lecture the jury from here to eternity, but I've let bias be planted in their minds, and there's no rooting it out at this 11th hour. He'll be vindicated in a new trial. There's no question about that. The state has no case. I can say that now. I won't be sitting at the new trial. He may be vindicated at a new trial. Unless the situation grows worse. In which case, Adam, he may not live long enough to stand for a new trial. And in the meantime, he sits in a hostile jail. Unless it's very important. It's important, Judge, very important. Come in, Julio. Mr. Buckley. What brought you back? If I could have a, a little glass of whiskey. Huh? Francisco told me Paulino was doomed with or without my testimony. He ordered me to run. He said in this way I could best serve our cause. Francisco was wrong. Was he not, Mr. Buckley? He was wrong. Paulino is innocent. He was with me the day Miller was killed. If I testify to this, Paulino will be freed. Will he not? To justice. to escape, busted me over the head. I yelled for him to stop. But, but it was like he was plumb loco. Never stood a chance with two of my men with rifles there. He never stood a chance. Well, I wouldn't feel too bad about it, Sheriff. The Basque is dead. Pinewood is saved for the future. And I wouldn't worry for a second, Sheriff, that you might have killed an innocent man. We ain't never gonna know that for sure now. He's still alive. Paulino! He lives! He lives! Some of you men help me get him over to my office. Come on. What's the matter, Sheriff? Afraid he may live to tell the truth? He don't mean nothing to me. I was just doing my job. He tried to escape. You saw Julio come into town, didn't you? The bass boy? Sure, we seen him. His testimony might have cleared Paulino. You think the court would take the word of a stinking Basque? Shut up, Russ. Well, he's trying to make it out that we shot Arietta because we were scared he might get proved innocent. He tried to escape. In broad daylight? 
With his arm in a sling? Knowing the street was full of guns with fingers just itching to pull the trigger and kill him? No. No, you can't prove that. I say he tried to escape. Nobody can prove different. Well, that remains to be seen. There'll be a hearing, Sheriff. In the meantime, I'll just take your badge. I'll appoint an interim sheriff and deputy. Alive and a free man, Sheriff. Paulino Arietta would be living proof that our American justice makes us much stronger than any alien philosophy. If he dies, he will not only have murdered an innocent man, but created a martyr for the anarchists. I wonder if men like you can really understand that. finish your work and get some sleep. Here's a gentleman to see you. It is late. I hope I am not disturbing you. Oh, that's all right. Thank you, Silas. I will say what I must say, and say it quickly. From the Basque community to our respected and honored friend, Counselor Gerald Barclay. Well, I, uh, I thank you. Paulino wanted to come and present these personally, but the half dozen bullet wounds, it will take even a Basque a few more days to fully recover. I, uh, I trust that those sheepskins are full of good Basque wine. That will wait on the tasting. Uh, well, at any rate, it's, it's more than I expected. I told my people to wait on this until the hearing was over. I told them that perhaps it was just another trick for the benefit of the gullible Basques, that you weren't really serious about trying the sheriff and the others. My people feel you have done enough already. And what do you think, Francisco? I admit, I was surprised when you had that man, Hawkins, up in San Francisco, indicted as Miller's murderer. Did you really think that we'd just disregard his confession? I don't know what I thought. I admit it, Mr. Barclay. You confused me from the first, taking on the case, staying with it even after we... after we beat you. Well, that's all over with now. Paulino is free. Won't you join us in a glass of wine, Mr... De Navarre, Francisco. De Navarre. That's lovely. It has been a long, hard ride, and if it would not be too much trouble. I'll get the glass. Just for yourself, madame. Just for yourself. Shure, Osakariari, to your help. Um, I, I think I'd like to watch you first. Shure Osegariari. Ha, 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 ha. 